Hey guys, it's Hank from Sprues and Brews, and today we're going to be taking a look at Tamiya's classic Pack 36 kit from 1988. I built this little guy up a few years ago and never got around to painting it, so I figured this would be a great opportunity to take you all through some chipping techniques. So, if you're interested in learning some more about chipping and weathering your scale models, or you're just looking forward to a little small-scale German artillery action, let's check it out. Before we get into the painting process, let's take a quick detour to learn a little bit of history about this particular piece of equipment. The Pac-36 was a 3.7cm anti-tank gun originally developed in 1934 by Rheinmetall. It served as the primary weapon of the Wehrmacht Panzerjager units until it was eventually phased out and replaced by the larger Pac-40 sometime in 1942. The Pac-36 proved to be a competent weapon for the Wehrmacht during the invasion of Poland in 1939 and in the early stages of Operation Barbarossa, during which it had little difficulty knocking out Polish armored vehicles and the lighter Soviet T-series tanks like the T-26 and T-35 from up to 1,000 meters. During the Battle of France, however, the Pac-36 could do little to penetrate the armor of the heavier French Char B1 and British Matilda IIs without engaging these tanks at dangerously close range from the sides or the rear of the vehicle. At this time, the Pac-36 began to earn its nickname Heeresanklapgerat, or literally Army Door Knocking Device, as its 37mm shells were prone to bouncing off heavy armor plating with no effect at all. The real downfall of the Pac-36 came during the fall of 1941 with the appearance of T-34s and KV-1s on the Eastern Front, whose heavy sloped armor proved too much for the plucky little artillery piece. Despite these limitations, the Pac-36 continued to see action for the duration of the war as a mounted weapon on various German vehicles like the SDKFC Half-Track for infantry support. In 1943, a special shape charge called the Style Grenats 41 was developed as a sort of beefed up rifle grenade for the Pac-36. This powerful projectile was deadly to nearly any allied vehicle on the battlefield at the time, but its low velocity and limited range still called for the gun's crew to position themselves at a terrifyingly close range to their targets. Over 20,000 Pac-36s were developed over the course of its service life, and they can still be seen today as staples of World War II history museums throughout the world. Alright, back to our regularly scheduled programming. We're going to start by hitting the entire kit with a coat of Vallejo Black Acrylic Primer to give us a nice clean surface to work with. Once we're done priming, we're going to grab some Vallejo white aluminum to serve as our deepest paint layer. When we do our chipping later, we'll reveal a little bit of this bare metal with the biggest scrapes and scratches on our Pack 36 Now, most of this metallic paint won't be visible, but we do want to make sure to apply it to the areas where the gun is going to get the most wear, like on the front of the gun shield, around the breech and the firing mechanism, and on the wheel wells. Next, we're going to grab some regular old hairspray. Any brand should do the trick, but I like this Aquanet Extra Super Hold. We're going to carefully decant a little bit of this into our airbrush by gently depressing the nozzle. A bit of it inevitably is going to spray back out of the basin, but you should be able to catch just enough of the liquid hairspray that we can airbrush it all over our model like you would a coat of varnish. This hairspray layer is going to act as a sort of chipping fluid for us. You'll see what I mean in just a minute here. For our primary paint layer, we're going to use some Dunkelgelb and spray it all over the model. Don't worry about painting over the rubber tires right now, we're going to have to come back and hand paint those in later, so some overspray is okay. Just make sure you hit the inner and outer wheel wells with the Dunkelgelb before moving on. For our first round of chipping, all we need to do is add a little water to a stiff bristle brush and start gently brushing it over the model. What's going to happen here is the water will start to dissolve the hairspray and cause the paint that we sprayed over it to chip, revealing our metallic layer below. This is an awesome way to replicate chipped paint effects because it's the real deal. This effect is entirely up to your personal preference. You can go as heavy or as light as you like. It's a good idea to use some reference photos as you go along and to keep in mind where the heaviest areas of wear and tear would be on this piece of equipment in real life. Here's our Pack 36 after the first round of chipping. Personally, I think the aluminum chips are a little too stark here, so I'm going to go back and hit the entire kit with another light coat of Dunkelgelb. This helps make it look a little more like areas where the paint is thinning or where the equipment has been exposed to the elements, rather than really deep paint chips. You can see what I mean here. The damage is a bit more subtle. Next, I'm going to grab a little Dunkel Grau and apply some freehand camouflage to the gun shield. 
I tried to replicate the camo scheme on an actual Pack 36 that I saw at the American Heritage Museum. Now we're going to come back and do a second layer of chipping. We're going to use the exact same technique as before and gently chip these new layers of paint. This creates some really cool depth variation to our chips, with some reaching all the way down to the aluminum and some only reaching down to the first or second layers of Dunkel Grau. I think it's a super realistic effect and looks great at this scale. Here's our pack 36 all chipped up. I love the subtle scratches that you can see in the camouflage layers. I was really happy with how this came out. Before we move on to weathering, we just need to do a little brush painting for our detail work. I'll start with some flat black and paint in the rubber tires. Next, I'll use a little red leather for the grip on the traverse mechanism. For the wooden barrel cleaning rods, we'll use some tan earth. And for some variation, we'll use a bit of beige brown for the wooden shovel handle. We'll use our flat black again for the coupling elements on the ends of the cleaning rods and as a base layer for our shovel head. A bit of white aluminum works well to add some pop to the metal parts of our shovel. And with all of our detail paintwork complete, it's time to spray the whole kit with a coat of AK Interactive Gauzy Agent to prep for weathering. With our gloss coat applied, we're going to use some Ammo Mig Dark Wash to help accentuate all the rivets and bolts on our Pack 36. We're going to do a simple pin wash here, applying a small amount of wash around all of these raised elements. It's okay if it looks a little messy right now, we're going to come back with some enamel thinner and remove all of our excess. Try to keep your brush strokes in the direction of gravity here so that any streaking you create looks authentic. Every once in a while you can clean your brush with a paper towel to remove the wash that's going to accumulate on the bristles. We're going to repeat this process all over the model. This effect creates a nice artificial shadow around our raised elements and helps make all the details pop. Using the exact same technique, we're going to apply some Pacific Dust Wash to the rubber tires to replicate some dust and dirt accumulation between the treads. Excess can also be cleaned off with a bit of enamel thinner. Once the enamels have dried completely, our Pack 36 is done with weathering and is ready to be sealed up. We'll use some Ammo Lucky Matte Varnish to do the job. And just like that, our Pack 36 is complete. This was a fun little project that I completed in just a few hours. I'm planning on building a small diorama and gunnery crew for this as well, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed the video and got something out of it, please don't forget to hit that like button. You can also subscribe to the channel for more awesome scale modeling content. I try and post something new just about once a week. So that's it for me today, guys. Until next time, be well, happy building, cheers.